So over here, we've got 12 and 66. Now, these factor trees are going to take up a little bit of room. So let's, I'm going to put my 12 up here for the sake of room. Okay? All right, we've got 12. Well, you could do two things, 3 times 4, which most of you know, so we'll do that one. Or 2 times 6 would have worked, but don't ever use 1 because it doesn't change anything. You still have a 12. All right, well, uh, 3 is done. That can come down. And then 4, I know, can multiply 2 times 2. So at the end of this one, I have 4, 12. I have a 3 times a 2 times a 2. That's my final prime factorization for that number. Now, if I do 66, okay, now, I sure wish they left me more room on here. Let's do, I'll try and fit 66 down here. 66. All right. Um, let's see. Well, I know, let's see. Three could go into it. 3 times 33, and 3 is prime, so that can come down, and I can do 3 times 11, right? And 11 is prime because I don't know any multiplication facts that can go into, into that one. What if I did... You know what? I did that wrong, didn't I? Did you find my mistake? Take a look at this factor tree and see what's wrong with it. If you figured out that 3 was wrong, you are right. Because 3 times 33 is 99, isn't it? So we got to have a 2 there. Good catch. All right. So we got 2, a 3, and 11. So over here, I'm going to write my number 66 and 2 times 3 times 11. Now, I find it a lot easier if you line those numbers up, okay? Instead of just writing them out, really think about where you're placing those numbers. So I have a 2. Is there a 2 up here? Yes. We'll cross it off. I have a 3. Do I have a 3 up here? Yes. Cross it off. And I have an 11, which I don't have an 11 here, so I'm going to write it over here. And I'm just going to put an X here and an X here so everything's lined. Oh, you know what? That's not going to work because that's going to make you think multiply, isn't it? All right. All right. So I have threes in common and I have twos in common. This has a two, but this one doesn't. This has 11, but this one doesn't. So my final answer is going to be 3 times 2, and that equals 6. So the greatest common factor of 12 and 6, or I'm sorry, 12 and 66, is 6. All right, let's give you one more clean example. Make sure you pause before I erase. I want to give you one more clean example and then let you try some on your own. All right. 18 and 30. 18. What, what can we multiply to make 18? I can think of two. I can think of two times nine or three times six. I'm going to go with mm, three times six. Is three prime? If so, yes. Bring it down. Six, is that prime? Mm, no. I can multiply two times three to get six. Is 2 and 3 prime? Yes. Bring it down. All right. I've got 30. Let's see. Um, I can think of two things right away. I can think of 3 times 10 or 5 times 6. I'm going to go with 5 times 6 because for me that's a little easier to break down. I know that 5 is prime. Nothing you can multiply to make 5. And 6 is 2 times 3. So now I can bring those down because they are prime. And I've got them all the way down to their prime factors. All right, now I'm going to list them. 18, I got a 3, a 2, and a 3. So I'm going to write them 
this way so that they are nice and clean. I got my two first, my three and three. Those numbers are all accounted for. I like to cross them off as I list them because then I'm not worried that I missed a number. But if I list them like from least to greatest, it just keeps everything lined up neatly. Now I'm gonna look at this 30. Do I have a two? Yes, I do, right here. So I'm gonna put that right here. Do I have a three? Yep, right here. And then I have this five left. You can't forget about him, but he doesn't fit with that three. So I'm gonna put a five right here. We'll leave these blanks. All right, what do we have in common? Let's circle the ones that we have in common. I see I have twos in common. I have threes in common. If I take one of each of those numbers, two times three, I get six. My greatest common factor of 18 and 30 then has to be six. All right, make sure you pause. Take down this in case you get stuck. You can always back it up and look at it again. Or at least if I see your notes, I can help you finish out what you're missing. All right, we have one more problem to do together, and that is 32 and 48. 32. When I think of 32, I automatically think of um, 8. Because 8 times 4, 8 and 16, 24, 32. So even though it's not going to give me a prime number, to me, honestly, it's just the easiest one to come up with. So now I have to break down both of these, because I know 4 is not prime. I can make 2 times 2, and I know that 8 can become what? Yes, 2 times 4. And, and am I done? Sorry. No, because I have to break this 4 down to 2 times 2. Now I can bring these down. I got a 2, I got a 2, I got a 2, another 2, and another 2. So the prime factors for 32 are 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. It's a lot of 2s. All right, 48. When I think of 48, first thing that comes to my mind, 6 times 8. You know why? Because when I was in elementary school, my teacher would go, 6 times 8 is 48. And it just stuck in my brain, and that's how I remember my 6 times 8. All right, I have to break both these numbers down. I have a 6, I can make it into 2 times 3, and I have an 8. And I can break that into 2 times 4. Am I done? Are all those numbers prime? No, they're not. This 4 still has to break down to 2 times 2. Now I'm done. Bring down this two, three, two, two, two. Okay, now let's line them up. I got 32. I've got one, two, three, four, five twos. One, two, three, four, five twos. All right, let's see how many twos we got here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then I've got this three. And I don't have a three, so it's going to be a little cramped here for a minute, but I'm going to put that three over here, and we got blanks. All right, let's, I'm going to get rid of this for a minute so it cleans it up just a little bit. All right. All right, let's circle everything in common. We got twos, 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 and then I got two here but not here, and a three here and not there. So we take one of each of those twos, two times two times two times two. One of each of those groups that we have in common. All right, two times two is four, good. Four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. Your greatest common factor for 32 and 48 is 16. And you've done it. All right, if you have any further questions, make sure you pause right now to take these notes down. And if you're still not understanding it, that's okay. Back it up and watch it again. See if you get it after that. And if you're still stuck, then you let me know. All right, these objectives, remember, we are defining multiples and least common multiple and greatest common factor. 
We're using those factor trees to find the greatest common factor, and you can list multiples to find the least common multiple. I hope your day is a fantastic one. Hope you're making great choices, respecting and loving people, and you have a fantastic day.